Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> Today is Thursday, um, January 26th. I almost said it's 7.59, which it is, but uh, not really that much relevant information. Um, I've got my podcast co-host here. If you're on video, I'll turn it down so you can see him sitting here on the desk with me. I shouldn't do that, though, because then I end up fidgeting with the camera and getting it set up right. He's always very interested when I ring the chimes. That's why I'm laughing sometimes when I'm ringing the chimes because he's looking up at it, uh, giving that clapper the interested eye. So um, here we are. Here we are then. <laughs> My mind is a blank. Uh, let's see. So what's going on? Uh, I am sort of scrambling. I've got a lot going on the next few days. Um, just, you know, I usually have these sort of vast expanses of unprogrammed time in my life, which is how I like it. And this week has just been crazy busy. Um, all sorts. I've had like some kind of appointment every day and I'm doing things so I can get out of town. So I mentioned that I'm... Uh, headed out of town on Sunday and uh, we'll be gone most of next week, come back on Thursday. But, you know, so it's sort of like um, just uh, how are things to do to get out of town, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted by how adorable this kitten is. He's just lying here, very relaxed, looking out my window. He has a very regal air to him. So, uh, yeah, I have a manicure this morning, uh, even though I don't yet need it, but because I'll miss it next week and be out of town, I want to get it done today. And then um, I have a meeting this afternoon. That's not huge. Actually, I have a couple of meetings. And then Dorinda arrives at 5 o'clock. So I've got to do some things to get ready for her visit, which will be lovely. Um but it's just, you know, like various things to get ready for that. And then she and I are going to go see a movie. We're going to go see that um, Otto, A Man Called Otto, uh, the new Tom Hanks movie. While she's up in civilization, she likes to go see movies. And then tomorrow uh, we're going to work on this workshop uh, that we're putting together. That's, uh, that's kind of a talk. I'm, I'm not sure what to call it, but it's called in defense of twilight because both of us love twilight and we got really tired of all of the hate leveled at twilight so a while back a few years back um when was it 2018 uh dorinda posted a photo from when she and i shared a room at the rwa national conference that's really quite funny i wonder if i could find it um, huh. Well, I was going to message her to ask, for, ask her for it, and maybe I can find it and put it on the show notes. Uh, I should also mention that Ruby released yesterday, so that is that completes the facets of passion books. So all four of those are out now. Um, they won't turn up on random Amazon searches because they're erotic, right? You know, so... Uh, if you want to read them, go to my website and find them. But I'll put links. Uh, well, it's already in the show notes. So anyway, Dorinda posted this picture of the uh, our bathroom at RWA National Conference in Denver. And it was um, her side of the sink and mine. And she asked which of us was the pantser and which was the plotter. And uh, it was kind of funny because... Dang, now I want to find it. I succumbed and tried looking for the uh, photo. Anyway, uh, and I couldn't find it. But it was uh, just sort of illustrative, let's just say that, of our two different styles. Uh, and people actually didn't get it right, which of us was which. Uh, 
I often maintain that I have this very wild style, um, intuitive style of doing most everything, which some people refer to as pantsing. But otherwise, I am actually quite orderly in many ways. Uh, at any rate, uh, Dorinda wants to spend a day working up this workshop, whereas I thought we'd wing it. So it'll be fun to hang out with her. We're going to watch the Twilight movie. I don't know if we'll watch more than one. And put together our notes. Um, gather our thoughts. And then on and on Friday night, we're going to hang out with Charlie and Negan. Because Negan would really like to meet Dorinda. They've never met all this time. And then on Saturday, oh joy, we'll go to my friend Robin Perini's, our friend Robin Perini's memorial service. Uh, so that'll be good. And then Sunday, fly to California. So, and in between, I have all of these things that, like, I have not been getting done all week. Uh, it's just, it's it's a thing. <laughs> I just feel the, you know, I, I know this kind of waxes and wanes, but uh, yeah. Oops, I did not mean to hit that. But yeah, I'm just, uh, I feel like I owe people in Sipwa a bunch of stuff. But yesterday I did something a little bit different. Uh, we did a couple of hours of work and then I had to run out for an appointment. And then I came back and I did another hour in the afternoon, uh, which I don't usually do. And it was a little bit painful. It didn't flow very well. But I did get up to where I needed to be for the day. And so I thought that that was worth it. Um, I know we talk a lot about, uh, you know, like, are they good words when they don't feel good? And, and I have this conversation with so many people, so many writers, and, and it, it comes up all the time that uh, the words that we write when we feel like it's pulling teeth and it's really difficult, that they're indistinguishable later from the words that come when everything is flowing and fabulous. And uh, Ed Kamara, when I had brunch with him, he said that he thought that, uh, and he's on my list too, I'm supposed to go by and visit him and take him a book, I haven't done that either. Uh, <laughs> At any rate, Ed said he thought that the words that come when when it's really flowing, when things feel great, that he thinks are actually worse because you're like, I can't remember what his rationale was. He said that he thought it was like you weren't working hard enough for them or something. So yesterday I was really having to set aside the editor brain. And yes, this is an ongoing thing, you know, even though I say, oh, when I'm drafting, I set aside editor brain, I don't. Uh, think about it. I don't let it um, interfere. I do square brackets, you know, and nothing to stop the flow. But lately, I think I've been thinking about it way too much and wanting it to be good the first time around. And really, that's not a great way to write. At least it's not good for fast drafting. So, so yeah, I'm really... Uh, I feel like there's a lot of repetition, but, and I'm going to have to go back and weave some things in, but then I'm reminding myself that that's what the revision phase is for. And I just have to constantly have that conversation with myself, apparently. So, um, other things. I mentioned Ruby is out, came out yesterday. I, I didn't do much for the release of it. But a lot of people have pre-ordered it. Thank you if you pre-ordered it. Um, we've got a nice little spike in sales, I think. Let's look. Yeah. Yeah, very decent. So I appreciate the support there. Uh, and then the uh, GoFundMe for Grace is just phenomenal. Uh, she... <laughs> she's already blown past a hundred thousand uh, dollars she's blown away she's just uh, I talked to her a few times yesterday and she's just 
so overwhelmed in the best possible way by the outpouring of love and support, which I told her that she would get. But does she listen to me? No. So it's really just been an, a moving experience, a moving and emotional experience to see uh, how generous people are. So um, I've been re-watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, some, uh, season six, because uh, I was talking with a friend of mine about the episode Once More with Feeling and how brilliant it is. And I thought, oh, I wanted to watch that again. And I have tried a Buffy rewatch before and had... I, I, I don't feel like it's held up well. And I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that. And not only because of all of the stuff that's come out about Joss Whedon, but I mean, the show is so campy in some ways that it is difficult for me to rewatch. And I know that that was like part of the conception back then. Uh, I never saw all of the episodes though, because when it was airing on TV, um, we didn't watch TV much. We were, I was busy, oh, so busy. So I was like at classes every night teaching or taking. And so I only caught it here and there. And so I've thought about doing the sequential rewatch, but I find I have very little patience for it. Uh, and so even with season six, I've been rewatching and basically fast forwarding through everything except for the interactions between Spike and Buffy. Uh, because I really love a lot of things about that relationship. And yes, I'm absolutely a Spike shipper. Um, Spike all the way. In fact, part of what prompted this was uh, last weekend, there was, um, we had the Romance Steering Committee Town Hall uh, with Sipwa and Charlene Harris talked. And so I was telling my friend that it had been Charlene Harris and he said, oh, that he hadn't read the books, but loved True Blood. I just thought I have a cat. There we go. Uh, hey, don't step on that. No. Yeah. He's going he's to make a cameo here. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> if you're on video, he is now showing up. Uh, so... Here we go. Cat distraction, part of the brand here at First Cup of Coffee. Buffy, oh, True Blood. And I was mentioning that something that Charlene said that I thought was interesting was that she had always known, and this is spoilery if you didn't watch through to the end of True Blood or read the books, here's a spoiler. Um, <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> at this point, but uh, she said that she always knew that uh, Suki would end up with Sam and because she said Suki wanted to have a family and she wanted to have children and she needed a living man to do that. Uh, so Bill and Eric being vampires, she said she couldn't end up with either of them because uh, they were dead and she was a living girl and which I disagree with tremendously. And I told my friend that this just proves that authors can be objectively wrong because Eric Northman was the hottest choice and obviously the way, the way to go. And that led to the conversation about Spike and Spike being the hot way to go. So it's interesting to rewatch, uh, especially with this lens many years later. And I still find that relationship between Buffy and Spike intensely erotic and powerful. And I love how, and again, we're talking spoilers here, right? Uh, when she comes back from the dead, that he's the one who understands and that he's the one who understands how self-destructive she's feeling and how he's, I mean, he works really hard to take care of her. And she kind of fights him the whole way. And there's so much conversation about how Buffy and Spike had an abusive relationship. Um, and they, they fight each other all the time. And the sex is violent. 
and this is regarded as being bad, right? But the thing is, is that Buffy being the slayer, she can defeat anyone. I mean, she has the supernatural ability to, to fight and defeat anybody. And so when she cannot, and, and there's this sort of whole, I won't go into the whole subplot, but why suddenly Spike is able to fight back. Uh, it's, it's important because Spike becomes the one person that Buffy can't push around. And there's this whole thing that the writers ended up working in, you know, like about this being abusive where Buffy feels guilty and terrible and like something is wrong with her that she enjoys this violent sex with Spike. You know, why do I let him do these things to me and all of this? And it's, it's, it's annoying to me uh, because it feels like, it feels like a level of slut shaming. And I realize that some of this probably comes from Joss Whedon mm -hmm. and uh, the things that became so problematic with him, but it's like, it's okay if you like uh, mutually consensual violent sex, which they do. And it's the, the fighting each other, the knockdown drag out fighting is part of their foreplay. And it's something that, that Buffy desperately needs at this point in her life, because she's still in this place where she feels not quite alive and where she feels self-destructive and Spike brings this, uh, I don't know, this, this level of aliveness of, of the pain and the pleasure that she needs. And he's also the one who sees what a dark place she's in. Um, and I, that's one of my favorite, I don't know if it's a trope, but, um, I love that connection between people where, uh, the lover is like the one person who sees, uh, what's going on where they're the one person who understands. Uh, and I didn't like where they took it. I, and I might stop eventually here. We'll see, but it's been, it's been good to rewatch. Um, I'm also reminded how much I hated Dawn in these episodes. Uh, and I know I'm not alone in that, but just that, um, God, she's just such an unreasonable, this petulant teenage girl trope where they're just like all emotional and they don't care about anybody else and they can't be talked to. You know, I think that there are certainly times when teenage girls are like that, but to be like that nonstop, um, and often for almost no reason, it's just stupid. So, so that's kind of what I've been doing. I'm also reading Spare by Prince Harry uh, because I wanted to. And so that's been, that's interesting to read. It's not well written. It's very simplistically written, which is what you need to do for a book like that. I don't know if he wrote it or if a ghostwriter wrote it or a combination, but um, so far it's interesting. I, I will report more. All right, um, I'm going to go take care of my things. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll make Dorinda do the podcast with me. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how she feels. Um, if you have anything you want us to talk about, we could do that. Just let us know. Comment or message me. So I will probably see you all tomorrow. You all take care. Bye-bye.